we're going to have a recording of this one. So hello, everyone. Mandy Ross. Um, I'm part of the community team on the content team, and I am happy, very happy and excited today to present um, Andrew and Tracy, who are going to talk to us about the Atlassian visualization platform, which is something that we're all very excited about, especially me, <laughs> probably all y'all too, but um, I've just been really excited to see this feature come into our products for a while now. So um, without further ado, I'm going to shut my little community mouth and hand it over to Inder and let him take it away and introduce himself. And maybe Tracy, you can do an intro too. Awesome. Thanks, Mandy. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Indapal Singh, and I'm the product manager on the Atlassian Analytics team. Uh, yeah, thank you all for joining the insider session. And uh, we're super excited to have you here and show you what we've got for Atlassian Analytics. Uh, Tracy and I will be walking you through the product and the demos. Uh, but before we get started, maybe Tracy, you can introduce yourself and then I'll, I'll start the presentation. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Tracy. I'm a senior support engineer for Atlassian Analytics and I'm also very excited to be with you all today. All right, so let's get started without further delay. And I'm going to start by sharing my screen. And uh, please let me know when you see a slide that says Atlassian Data Lake. Do you see the slide? Okay, perfect. Uh, so yeah, just again, a recap uh, for the uh, insider session today, we are going to look at Atlassian Analytics and Atlassian Data Lake. Uh, and Tracy and I are going to walk through this demo and presentation. Uh, the first part of the session today will be a uh, little bit about the background uh, of what uh, Atlassian Analytics is, uh, what is the history, uh, what is the product scope uh, when we talk about Atlassian Analytics, what it includes and then what it doesn't. And then we'll uh, get to the exciting part of actually doing the demo. At any point, in the presentation, if uh, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and, and ask questions. Okay. So uh, Atlassian acquired Chartio last March. Uh, Atlassian wanted to uh, enable uh, data for all its the customers. Uh, you know, give them easy access to the uh, the data that is stored within their products. Uh, and acquiring Chartio fits that strategy very well. So Chartio. Uh, uh, think about Chario as uh, one of the BI2 vendors. Uh, uh, they were in the business for close to 10 years uh, and they had a uh, pretty re reputable clientele like uh, DoDash and New York Times. So Chario product was, uh, or rather is, is a very, it uh, uh, is a pretty capable uh, BI tool, business intelligence tool uh, product and uh, after Atlassian acquired it, we rebranded Chartio uh, and launched it as Atlassian Analytics. So we have made a lot of significant changes to Chartio since then, uh, but the core functionality still remains and we continue to leverage the capability that Chartio provides. So in case you heard the word Chartio and Atlassian Analytics, now you know that uh, it, uh, it's, it's the rebranding of Chartio that is what we call as Atlassian Analytics. Now, when we say the word analytics, uh, it means many things to many people, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, does it include the data? Does it include raw data? Does it include process data? Is Does it include visualizations, graphs, charts? Like, what does that mean? So uh, in, the, in this and the next slide, uh, we, we'll talk about what is the product scope of analytics and we'll say, when we say analytics, what all does that include and where we see the long-term roadmap for, for the product offering uh, going. Uh, at the heart of the analytics product offering is what we call as the unified data lake. Uh, it's also called as Atlassian data lake. So it's uh, it's uh, you know name, front end facing name is Atlassian data lakes. Uh, it is unified because what we're doing here is getting the data from all your Atlassian products and storing them at a central location. Uh, and it's not just lifting the data as is from the products and putting it there because, uh, you know, if, if you've been in, uh, doing analy analytics, you know that the data, the way it's stored in products is 
usually useless when it comes to getting business intelligence inside. So the data has to be clean, refined, processed, uh, and stored at a place where it's now ready to uh, be analyzed. And that's what we are doing here in the data lake. So the data lake is not the raw data lake. It's actually a very clean, processed, transformed data, uh, which you can almost say is a business ready uh, data warehouse. So uh, we have been spending a lot of time and effort make, in making sure that the way we are modeling data in it is very intuitive. Uh, you don't have to write complex queries to get the insights you want, and you're not struggling with duplications or any sort of error. So, uh, so the data lake is what powers the entire end-to-end -end offering. Uh, and like I said, it, it really sits at the heart of uh, analytics. Now, once this data is sitting in analytics, uh, the second question is, okay, how, how do I leverage it? How do I get the data out of it and start using it? So there are multiple ways uh, you can achieve this. The, the first way is, uh, you know, you, you may be already having business intelligence tool. Uh, Atlassian has been around for many, many years, and we know a lot of our customers already have third-party BI tools, be it Tableau, Power BI, Domo, Click. And so uh, we will have data connectors to our Atlassian data lakes where you can get the data and analyze it in the BI tool of your choice. Uh, you can also get the data and if you don't want to analyze in your BI tool right away, that's perfectly fine. You can get the data out of the data lake, put it in your warehouse uh, and maybe run some sort of algorithms or analytics and then do uh, go for the downstream processing. So we will also be providing data connectors in case you want to just get the data out and put it in your own data warehouses. And really the last piece uh, there is, you can leverage uh, Atlassian Analytics itself. Uh, and when we say Atlassian Analytics, uh, it really manifests itself in three different ways. The first one is uh, what we call as a visualization. So visualizations are nothing but uh, you know a standalone business intelligence capability. So, uh, if you have, let's say, Jira, uh, Confluence, or uh, service management, analytics will come as another product, and we'll look at that uh, shortly. So it's a standalone uh, product within the class and suite where you can go and build your visualizations. The hey, Andrew, way... we have a quick question. We have a quick question in the chat. Um, as it is unified, will it also contain the app data, or will will there at least be a way for app vendors to inject their data into the data lake? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I've got a slide uh, just after this where we'll talk about the third party integrations. Uh, so the uh, end roadmap is to have the third party Atlassian marketplace apps to be able to uh, enrich the unified data lake data. Uh, it's it's not uh, ready yet, but it is definitely uh, on the road. Any other questions? I think that looks good, thank you. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so the, the second way uh, we can uh, utilize analyt uh, product to get the data. Maybe you're writing on this page, maybe you're writing a Jira story and you want the analytics to embed there for you to be able to share. Uh, and so uh, the second uh, manifestation is around the in product dashboard. So we're gonna get these dashboards and embed them back into the products. And the third one is, sorry, uh, I'm getting an internet connection uh, warning. Am, am I cutting off? Or is it okay. You're back now. You you stopped, You paused for like one second and then you came back. So, um, okay, so, so you're sorry. a little choppy. But I think you're back now. So let's let's proceed. Okay. Yeah, we, we had a storm over the weekend. So the internet is a bit choppy. Uh, and the last one is around contextual insights. So think about, uh, you know, you, you, you're sitting with your team, you're planning a sprint or a retro, and you want these small uh, data snippets or widgets, whatever you may call it, pop up and give you contextual insights within the context or the time frame that you are. Uh, and so that will be the third way that you can actually leverage uh, class in analytics. Sorry, just give me, whoops. Sorry, I'm trying to go back here. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so this is another view of what we just spoke about. Uh, you would have a classing data uh, lake at the middle. Uh, it's getting data from uh, all the classing properties like um, Jira, Ops, Genie, Bitbucket. It'll also have integration with the classic marketplace. So the third party apps will be able to uh, get the data or inject the data into the data lake. Uh, and then getting the data out of the lake for an uh, analysis purpose, you can use your BI tools, you can use any other data uh, warehouses or databases that you have, or you can use Atlassian analytics. And what we are going to uh, see next for in the presentation is really focusing on the Atlassian analytics part, uh, the standalone BI tool uh, experience and what does that look like? Uh, so for this presentation, we are not really covering the BI tool and the data systems. The rest of the presentation will be focused on Atlassian analytics. Before I shift gear, uh, just wanted to check if uh, there are any questions. Yeah, there's one in here. Um, it DM'd me by mistake, I think. Would I be able to share this link for later with one of my customers? So when you say a link, uh, do you mean uh, you will be creating visualizations and then you want to share the link? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, we, we still don't have that capability as of now, but the ability to share links with external parties, that is something on the roadmap, but, but not at the moment. Thank you. Okay, uh, so let's shift gear now. And uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll quickly walk through uh, maybe about three slides around what automatically Oh, sorry, you meant the link to, later to the presentation. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think that Mandy. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That was that was a weird context shift. Um, yeah, uh, with your customers, um, I think so. I, I'm pretty sure it's a hidden link. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure it's just a hidden link on YouTube. So as long as you have the link, um, you can see it. So, uh, but we, can, we can't share this with customers until after we release this. All right, no problem. I just uh, th this has direct application to one of my customers that's trying to rebuild all of this stuff homegrown, and it sucks. Okay. Uh, I also have a, a slide deck that uh, we can share with external customers, if uh, not the entire video, but um, we can also. Oh, share that, that would be great, Andrew. If we could do that, I can add that as an attachment to the event afterwards as a follow up material. That'd be great. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so let's shift gear and look at the class in analytics. And what we are looking here is that standalone product experience, uh, like you have Jira, Confluence, service management, uh, Atlas in analytics will show up as a separate product and you can access it using the app switcher. Uh, and if you look at uh, the way uh, it works, it, it's a fully customizable BI tool. It's, it's not just dragging and dropping one simple widget and you're not able to do anything. Uh, it's everything that you would expect from a mature BI tool ability to customize, change fonts, change your visualizations, and, and do a host of different things. So it's a fully customizable solution. You can uh, also get started actually. So we know uh, many of the customers or the users would like to quickly you know, start building dashboards without having to write too many complex queries, uh, even though the data model is very simple. Uh, but having these set of uh, starter dashboards or, or even a set of uh, small templates, uh, they're super, super useful. So uh, we will have the capability to uh, include starter dashboards. We actually currently have, I think, close to six or seven, probably six starter dashboards already. So when, when my user creates a new uh, data source connection, they, they get these starter dashboards. So they're a great bit for you to kickstart your visualization journey and also get familiar with what all capabilities exist in, in the application. And you can also bring external data. So uh, Atlassian Analytics, though it is uh, tightly integrated with Atlassian Data Lakes, uh, remember it its legacy is from Chartio and Chartio uh, was a sort of BI tool that supported a lot of different data sources. So, uh, and we, we, we continue to, uh, continue to support that functionality. So you can also uh, connect to uh, uh, secondary data sources like PostgreSQL, 
uh, MySQL. Uh, you may have a use case where the data is sitting somewhere else and you want to mash it up with the class in data lake. So that's that's totally fine. You can do that. Uh, it, it's one of the amazing features of um, actually getting a full-fledged BI tool and using it uh, for our class in analytics purpose. I'll uh, stop here and uh, Tracy, at this point, I'll uh, probably uh, shift over to you uh, and I'll stop sharing. And whenever you are ready, Tracy, maybe you can start the demo. Uh, in the meantime, if anybody has any questions, we can take those as well. Looks like we're good here in the chat, unless anybody uh, wants to, has a question. Looks sure. like we're good. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll jump right in there. So I'm going to do a live demo now of Atlas Analytics. So give me a preview and show you what it looks like. Uh, so this is Atlas Analytics. Um, let me see. Sorry, I'm moving my Zoom bar. That's not in the way. Uh, but basically from Anywhere in, in Atlas and products like Jira Confluence, you could just access out analytics once it's enabled from the app switcher, uh, like you can with any other product. Um, so right now I've already switched to analytics uh, and I've landed here on my site. And this is uh, essentially the home page uh, after you switch to analytics. So this is what users would see. Uh, this is just a, a list of dashboards uh, that they have access to. Um, there's a couple different folders, as you can see on the left. Each dashboard belongs in a dashboard category as well. Uh, and then on the data tab on the top, this is where uh, you can see a list of data sources. And this is also where you can add uh, a new data source. Um, so as Ender mentioned just now, yeah, there is the uh, Atlassian Data Lake, uh, which is uh, containing all the product data from your Atlassian sites uh, in your organization. Um, right now, it's just JSM, uh, Jira Work Management, and Jira Software data, but soon other products as well, such as uh, Opstreamy, uh, Insight, and Confluence. Uh, and then you have the ability to add third party sources. And I won't walk through the entire process today, but just to show you what it looks like to add a new data lake connection. The only org admins will have the ability to add new data lake connections just because of uh, the sensitivity uh, around the data um, from your site. And once this loads, you have the, uh, there you go. You have the ability to select, uh, if you have multiple product instances, such as a sandbox site or, or another site within your org, those will show up here as well. Then you can select uh, the product you want, perhaps uh, to add the product, or pro product and then projects you want to add uh, their data to uh, in your, Data lake connection. Um, so you could set up multiple data lake connections within your LIC analytics site. Um, and then each one, I'll just go back. Each one, if you'd like, you can customize uh, depending on how you want to provide access and then grant maybe specific teams just access to uh, they own their, their projects and the data that they care about. Uh, it's pretty customizable. Let me go back here to the home page, and uh, I'll just walk you through now the process of creating a new dashboard. Uh, so that's just this new dashboard button on the top left or on the top. Um, if I click create, I could also click on create dashboard. I'll just do that. I'm gonna give my dashboard a name. I'll call it Product Insider. And uh, I'll just leave it at that default category and click create. Awesome. Uh, so this is the dashboard homepage and I don't have any charts on it. 
right now. So I'll show you how, to, how we can create our first chart. Uh, so I clicked on add chart and it takes me to this chart builder interface. Uh, so this is what um, we call Visual SQL. Um, just to walk you through the different sections, uh, this top left is where you will build uh, your query for your chart. Uh, and so as you can see here in this menu, uh, this is already the uh, the schema for the selected data source. Uh, if you want me to change it to a different uh, data source connection, but I'll just keep it at uh, this one for now. So you can see all the tables and columns uh, we have contained uh, in this data lake. Uh, and you could browse as well. Your project that will show a uh, preview there. There you go of the data contained in each table. So if you're not sure what um, which columns to use for the data that you're looking for, you can get that quick preview here. Uh, and then once you create your query, which we'll do in a sec, the chart preview will be here on the right. Here's where you can select what chart type you want, and then on the bottom here is going to be the result table, which will show the query results um, and some post query transformation steps. So uh, let's go ahead and build our first chart. Uh, so I'm gonna create a simple example. Just looking at your issue. I want to see issues created um, say over time. I'm going to select uh, the issue ID column from Jira, the Jira issue table. It's like that. But also, I wanted to show before we continue um, is that uh, analytics is building SQL behind the scenes. So uh, even though, uh, even if I select, say, a column from uh, another table, say in the Jira project table, for example, the project key column. So SQL is being generated uh, within this visual mode query. If I expand uh, with that caret there to see our advanced drawer, you can get a preview of the SQL uh, that analytics is generating for you. So you don't need to know SQL in order to build queries. Uh, and because we're joining or we're grabbing data from two tables, uh, analytics are also creating that inner join for you uh, based on foreign keys uh, we already have preset in the schema. So uh, that also makes it easy as well. Um, however, if you are SQL savvy and want to build your own custom queries uh, for advanced um, functionality, or, or you just really uh, want to build your own custom queries, uh, you're free to switch to the SQL mode as well. and uh, write your own queries here as well. So I'll switch back to visual mode. We wanted to do number of issues over time. I'll go back to the Jira issue table and grab the created at column. Uh, and so for these column selections, if I also click here, uh, you can change the aggregation. Uh, so issue ID defaulted to account of distinct, uh, which is one I want for this instance. Um, created, uh, created at, you can also change that that um, date aggregation. Uh, but in this case, yeah, I'll just leave it as day. Uh, and then add filter. Um, if you know SQL, this is your where clause. Uh, I'm just going to do, let's say we only care about issues created in the last month. I'll do created last one month, and that looks good. So I'll hit run query. And so at last seen 
data lake. Uh, so it's actually on top of the Databricks behind the scenes. So if you are writing your own SQL query, uh, you'll just use uh, Spark SQL syntax. Awesome. So my query finished. Uh, as you can see on the result table, here's the data populated from that query. And we have our chart preview um, here on the right. Uh, I can see other chart types are grayed out, actually. So if I wanted to switch to a single value chart, it's grayed out because the data is not formatted properly for that. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a, a sample table format too, so you know how your data needs to be formatted to generate that chart type. Uh, and then here on the result table, uh, you can see now you have a bunch of options here uh, on how to transform your data. So these are all post-query transformation steps. You have uh, table actions here on the top and column actions uh, here on the bottom. If you hover over uh, each column uh, and look at the different icons. Uh, so I think uh, the chart looks good, but I'm also going to add a additional column to look at uh, the cumulative total. So I'll just hit the formula column here. And then um, analytics provides already a bunch of guided formulas that you can choose from. You could also choose to write your own custom ones uh, using SQLite functions. Uh, but right now I'll just use the running total formula. I'll select the column because I want uh, running total of my issue count. Got that added here. And I'm actually going to switch this to a bar line chart. Looks a little better. And why don't we go ahead and rename uh, these columns as well. So I can do that by clicking the column. And I'll just call that issues created. And I'll call this one um, running total issues. Awesome. Uh, so you can also add it the chart settings. Let me go ahead and give this chart a title. It is created last month. If I can go to the here icon, I can access the full um, chart settings available. Uh, let me go to the access tab and give um, the charts some axes labels as well. And I'll call that issue count. Awesome. So we have our first chart. Let me go ahead and save that to the dashboard. And you can place that anywhere you'd like on your dashboard. Cool. Um, so we have our first chart. Um, Right now it's uh, fairly static, uh, however, so um, if you want to make uh, your dashboard a bit more interactive, you can actually add uh, controls to your dashboard by going to the Add Control button here on the right sidebar. Um, so some examples of controls are uh, date slider, drop down, um, text output, uh, calendar, for instance. Uh, and so I'm just going to show how to create a, a calendar and a, and a drop down control, as those are the most popular. Uh, so I'll click on the calendar control. I'll just leave that name as calendar. And um, for the start and end, you can choose relative or fixed date. These are um, relative date variables um, that are specific to LS analytics. And right now it's doing um, today, so four weeks. So that's four weeks prior to today, to, up to today. Uh, I'll just leave that as the default and click add. Save that here. And then I'm also going to add a drop down. So let's say you want to 
um, let's, see, let's say you want to filter your issues by priority. So I can go to the Jira issue table and go to the priority column. I'll select that and I'll hit run. Uh, so as you can see, this interface here for building a dropdown, it's uh, basically identical to the chart builder interface. So it's going to look very familiar. And we're just uh, grabbing a column right now to populate our drop down control. All right, so we have our uh, priority values right there. I'm actually going to name or rename this drop down to make it uh, more clear what this is for. Keep the data type as text. Uh, I'm going to enable multi select and I want to select empty state show all, uh, which just means that when nothing is selected on the drop down, it, it won't filter my charts. Uh, and then I'll uncheck the initial value setting and I'll just save that. Awesome. So we have our two controls. I can select uh, different priorities. I could also change the um, date range selected here. Uh, but as you can see, it's not uh, filtering my chart yet. And that's because we haven't connected these two controls to this chart. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do that as well. And I'm just going to create a clone of this first chart. I'll select which dashboard I want to clone it to. I'll just paste that down here. Let me just move. Oops, I'll move these down to this section. And let's just go ahead and edit I'll paste these. I'll just go ahead and edit this first chart. And just going to delete these steps real quick. And cloning is a, is a great way to um, work off of existing charts, so you don't need to rebuild the whole query from scratch. So we have uh, our issues created over time. And to connect it to the calendar control we just created, uh, instead of created at last one month, I'm actually going to change this to between and including. Um, and then when you see the variable section down here, um, analytics is already detecting that calendar control we just created. So I can just select calendar starts, oops, calendar starts and calendar end. Um, so now it's connected to that calendar control. And then we also wanted to filter it by uh, priority. So I'll go back to that priority column. I'll select uh, it's one of priority. And then if we also wanted to see that displayed in the chart, I'll just also want to add priority to the query. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. Um, you got a warning saying that it's not compatible. So I'm going to need to pivot my data. And I can do this easily with this pivot step uh, right here. Uh, so what this is doing is um, it's turning each of these values in the priority column into their own distinct uh, columns. And then it's going to sum up all the values in this um, kind of distinct issue ID column. And yep, now we have our charts. I'm just going to change this back to a bar chart. Awesome. And I'll just edit the name of this. Let's say issues created by priority. Great. And let me save that. Uh, and now, if I change the 
selection there in my drop down. Or if I want to change the date range, that's going to update my chart here. Great. So, uh, as you can see, um, lots of ways you can create custom charts using the data available uh, in the data lake. Uh, as you can see by my, my quick example, but uh, as Indra mentioned, you could also uh, query data that you bring in from your own third party sources. So if you have a Snowflake or a Redshift database, for instance, storing uh, maybe some other data that's important to uh, your business or your client's business, uh, you could also bring those into analytics as well. Um, and you can blend the data with uh, the data lake data within a single chart. Um, so if you click Add Query to or down the top, or on there on the right, I mean, and click on New Query. Uh, so essentially, this will bring up a new query uh, module, and you can uh, select a different data source. Uh, I don't have any third-party ones connected here, but you can also select a, a different analytics source, for instance. And then again, just create your own query. Uh, a join step is, is created for you, and you could change the, the join type. Uh, and that's just a way to blend uh, data from multiple sources uh, within analytics to power your charts. So it's a, a very powerful capability. All right, well, let's get out of that. And just before I end my demo, I just wanted to uh, show you a little bit more of some of the settings here on the right sidebar. Um, so you could add a, a line, uh, a text box to add some descriptions, uh, and an image, for instance. Um, show you the dashboard settings real quick. This is where you have a quick um, view of the variable controls on your dashboard. And here's what where you can um, grant access as well. So I can say I want to grant indirect access to my dashboard. I can do that from here. All right. Uh, and also just to mention, um, there are starter dashboards, uh, like Ender said, that we are generating for you out of the box once you add your daily connection. Um, so that this is one of them. Jira software simple project pre, uh, project overview and starter dashboards are a quick way for uh, you and your customers to see uh, your data uh, from the lake and um, it's a great way for you to also to not only see what's possible but also um, use these uh, kind of as chart templates so you can clone any of these charts uh, make modifications, save them to your own dashboard, um, and so forth. And then here's one as well, looking at um, some Jira service management data, uh, change issues, looking at um, changes by type, changes by risk, and so forth. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, and as we add new products to the lake, we'll be building new starter dashboards for them as well. So you'll have a lot to work out. All right, and that concludes my demo. Um, yeah, I'd like to open up it up for any questions. Hey, right, that was really cool. I just want to say um, I'm excited to see the Visual SQL stuff like built right into our products. Um, yeah, as a former Jira admin, I think this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> so just a little, just a little, little pump up from your from your. From your coworkers here. Um, does any do any of you leaders have anything you want to share, ask, clarify? I like the way it's not limited to just Jira and Elastic stuff. You can pull in other databases. Awesome. Thank you. I Mary. think that yeah, I've I, I mean I I've always struggled with Jira reporting and the data lake has looked like a good idea for a very long time. I'm actually in the middle of somebody who's writing extracts from the Jira database to go and get time series and it's just a, it's an absolute nightmare and this would make it go away. Yes, that's an awesome comment. Um question from Dirk in the comments. 
How is the license model for data lake analytics? It was announced as an enterprise only feature. Is this still the case or will it be made available for premium slash as a standalone project product? Yeah, so uh, right now uh, it is available for only enterprise customers. Uh, we do not have any plans to make it available to other uh, license types uh, as of now. Uh, and also uh, though data lake and analytics, you know, can stand on their own, right? You can take the data lake and use your third-party BI tool, or you can just use the analytics and hook it to uh, a, a SQL server. Uh, both of them come together as as a one consolidated offering. So it's it's not that you've got to pick and choose. And any of the enhancements either happening on analytics side, uh, the visualization side, or the data lake side, you get it. So. Though we call it, uh, you know, two different names because they can stand on their own. It's essentially one integrated offering. Uh, so, so that is one uh, one thing. Just uh, I forgot to mention of you. Cool. Um, have another one here from Susan Jericlean. What are the export options? Is there the ability to send an email with the content in PDF, say monthly, to a list of recipients? Yeah. So I'm sharing my screen again. Uh, if you look on the dashboard level and the downloads option, um, you can download it as a PDF or a CSV. Um, there's chart, ex chart export options as well. Uh, if you click on download in the chart menu, uh, CSV, PDF, PNG, and CS, uh, sorry, SVG, if you want to embed a chart in a presentation, for instance. And then um, from the dashboard settings, we do have dashboard subscriptions available so you can um, so email out this dashboard um, on a daily, week, daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Um, you could set custom variable values in your subscriptions as well. That's slick. I don't like that. Very nice. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Um, so I think that's it. If there are no other questions, that was an awesome demo, Tracy. Awesome overview, Ender. Thank you guys so much for coming and sharing this with, um, with our wonderful community leaders. Uh, and I know this is going into open beta in like June, something like that. So, um, is that right? That's the right time frame. Okay, cool. Uh, so you guys, June 8th is open beta. June end, end of June or first week oh, of end July. of June, sorry. Okay, yeah. yeah, end of June, so the very end of June. <laughs> so stay tuned for that, guys. Um, it's great to see everybody as usual. Um, if you want to hear this again or you think of questions you want to ask later, we have a later session happening at 4 p.m. PST, which is like 9 a.m. in Sydney or something like that or 10 something. Um, but yeah, so thanks, everyone. Um, I will add this recording to the thing. You're all going to get your awesome product insider badges. And um, it was great seeing you. And thanks again, Indra and Tracy, for joining us today. You guys are great. Round of applause. Woo all right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you later. Take care. Have a great Thursday or a weekend or wherever you are. <laughs>